morning folks. It is Thursday morning and we're going to read together from Acts chapter 20. It's here God's word. When the uproar was over, Paul sent for the believers and encouraged them. Then he said goodbye and left for Macedonia. While there, he encouraged the believers in all the towns he passed through. There he travelled down to Greece, where he stayed for three months. He was preparing to sail back to Syria when he discovered a plot by some Jews against his life. So he decided to return through Macedonia. Several men were travelling with him. There were Sopter, son of Pyrrhus from Berea, Antichrist and Sedundus from Thessalonica, Galatia from Derbe, Galatia from Derbe, Timothy and Titius, and Tromaeus from the province of Asia. They went on ahead and waited for us at Troas. After the Passover ended, we boarded a ship at Philippi in Macedonia and spent five days later joined them in Troas, where we stayed for a week. On the first day of the week, we gathered with the local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching to them, and since he was leaving the next day, he kept talking until midnight. The upstairs room where they met was lit with many flickering lamps. As Paul spoke on and on, a young, named, a young man named Atishmas, sitting on the windowsill, um, became very drowsy. Finally, he fell asleep and dropped three stories to his death below. Paul went over, bent over him and took him into his arms. Don't worry, he said, he's alive. Then they all went back upstairs and shared in the Lord's Supper and ate together. Paul continued talking to them until dawn and then he left. Meanwhile, the young man was taken home on hurt and everyone was greatly relieved. Paul went to land, by land to Asuas, where he had tra arranged to join him, for us to join him while he travelled by ship. He joined us there and we sailed together to Matilia. The next day we sailed past the island of Kis and the following, we, the following day we crossed the land of Samos until a day later we arrived in Miletus. Paul has, had decided to sail on past Ephesus. He didn't want to sp spend any more time in the province of Asia. He was hurrying to get to Jerusalem, if possible, in time for the arrival of the t festival of Pentecost. But when we landed at Miletus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him. When they arrived, he declared, You know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, now I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that come to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting from sins and turning to God and having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I do not know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in the city in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless it is used for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And now I know that none of you to whom I preach the kingdom will ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault. For I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as elders. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day, and my many tears for you. And now I entrust you to God and the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. I have never coveted anyone's silver or gold or fine clothes. 
you know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs and even the needs of those who are with me. And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt and prayed with them. They all cried as they embraced and kissed him goodbye. They were sad most of all because he had said that they would never see him again. Then they escorted him down to the ship. Amen. In the end of Acts chapter 20. Again, another part in Paul's journey, Paul's life. Part that maybe was difficult for him as he said goodbye to people that he had known so well. But again for Paul a real sense of knowing God's calling, knowing God's leading. Knowing that um, the Holy Spirit is taking him to Jerusalem. Uh, with that real sense as comes through in the last couple of chapters of that he wants to go to Rome. But again that sense of doom or ominous sense knowing that it will mean prison and difficulty. And yet he still obeys. So even though Paul knows there's a difficult road ahead and he could very easily choose to go off on his own path. He doesn't. He stays faithful to God. You know, we still face that same challenge today. Following God is not easy. Following God will bring us challenges. But that's what God calls us to do, is to follow him. To walk the path that he has led out before us. How will we walk it today? Will we accept the challenge? Or will we run scared in the opposite direction? Let's pray for strength. Father, thank you again for another day. Thank you again for your many blessings upon us, for your rich provision to us. Father, we know that you know what is best. We know that you have a plan laid out for us. Lord, sometimes that plan might be easy to follow. Often it will be difficult, but that's what we are called to do. Father, give us the strength to follow you. Give us the boldness to stand up for you. Give us that sense of guidance and direction from you through your Holy Spirit so we would know what you want us to do and that we would follow you. Lord, it's hard for us at times to discern, to understand, to know what you're calling us to do. Lord, as we read your words, as you draw others alongside us, may we have the ears to listen to what you're saying to us, to reflect upon it prayerfully and then to follow you. So Father, thank you and continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for joining with me. Uh, I trust you stay safe and well today. That you um, keep look after yourselves, that you have a good day as well, that you would know God's blessing today. And as we look forward towards Friday coming tomorrow and then the weekend, um, may you just know that sense of peace and reassurance from the Lord. So take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow.